Hello guys, welcome back to my channel again. In today's session, we are going to discuss about ReLU function. So I have already created a video on sigmoid function on which on that video I have shown how sigmoid function behaves with different values of inputs. In this video, we are going to see how ReLU function behaves. It is actually a pretty simple function because it the formula for the function is very simple but there are a couple of problems while dealing with ReLU function that also we are going to discuss so if you are new to my channel please consider subscribing it so on this channel i used to come up with new videos every single week so without waiting okay i'm waiting for you to subscribe my channel so let's start So on the screen, as you can see that I have written down the formula for ReLU. So it is fx is equal to max of x and 0. So there, the formula is pretty simple. If I will give some value on x which is less than 0, it will give me 0 over here. So let's plot this and see how the function is following up. So I'm going to give some low values like minus 3 here, minus 2 here. 0 here, 1 here, then 2 here, sorry, 2, 3, let me just pull this down, 4, 5, 6. Now let me apply the function max of this x, comma, 0. Okay. Let me pull this down. So eventually, as you can see that uh, wherever the value, sorry, here I need to put zero. And here I need to put minus one. Okay. So here I just made a scatter plot to show you how the values are looking like. So, so I just wanted to show you that if I am putting some value which is greater than zero, I'm getting the same value over here. Okay, let me change this range again. One, two. So, okay, now it looks cool. So, as you can see, wherever I am less than zero, it's giving me a zero value. And if I'm going greater than some value over here, so it's giving me the same value. So, this is the simple function if I increase some value like 4 to 10 I will make so this type of value I am getting the same value over on the fx so let me change some value minus 3 to makes it positive like 4 so you can see that wherever I am getting 4 value over here so this is uh, my simple function let me change it back now let's understand what all what are the problems we face while dealing with these functions so as you can, you can see that wherever i am giving the value which is greater than zero i am getting some slope okay guys so if you have not seen my gradient descent video just check out that video because i have explained gradient descent equation form so that you, uh, you will have proper understanding of how this function is behaving and why we are facing that problem so the gradient descent is applied on this function while we are trading these for the understanding. So the gradient, so the gradient descent applies to these functions gives me the gradient of the line. So from the gradient, I mean to say d by dx. See that if I do d by dx of x square, so I will get x. Okay, guys. So x square. If I'm so it is what it is doing, it is just reducing up the power. So here, if you if I see this is a line, and we know that the equation of line is mx plus c. Okay, guys. So if I do the d by dx or gradient, or I try to find out the gradient of mx plus c, what I will get? I will get d by dx of mx plus c that will become m. Okay, so I am getting the gradient over there. But if you see before zero. I am getting a straight line. Straight line it means it's a constant. So whenever you will do d by dx of a constant, you are going to get zero over there. 
so you will never get a gradient of a constant because that will automatically give you zero so while finding out minima or maxima we need to find out the gradient of the function so the the complete uh, ann or the the learning of the function dependent on the gradients so if you are not seeing my gradient recent video there i have explained it pretty clearly that how the gradient is uh, is helpful for finding out the man, the minima and the maxima of a function so whenever the input gets less than 0 this all those neurons wherever you are you are giving those inputs which are less than 0 all those neurons are getting dead because you will not be able to get the gradient of that neuron or the function over there so while iterating or in the next step when you will iterate you will get again zero over there so you will not learn until and unless you will have gradient over there okay so this is called dead neuron problem this is the most dangerous problem because all the long whenever you will iterate through uh, by your gradient descent there will be many chances where input gets negative and your neurons start dying with time so for rectifying this problem they have given a different type of function which is leaky relu so in the leaky relu whenever we are getting less value than zero we are not going to make it zero we are going to give a very small or pretty small value over there but this also has some of the issues and we are going to discuss about other methods to get over this problem in my next video so guys hope you have liked the video and if you are new to my channel again asking you to please subscribe it because you will be getting a lot of new things in coming weeks so with that we will close today's session okay guys take care bye bye